This is chapter 18 of The Night Singer. 18. Eric's training left him constantly hungry, so he went downstairs to grab a couple of bananas. He had another 10 kilometers this morning. He had run another 10 kilometers this morning, albeit at a slower pace than yesterday. So Priya had watched as he tied the laces on his running shoes. She was still wearing her dressing gown and coffee in one hand, smiling mockingly. Aren't you going to admit defeat soon? She had enrolled him in Iron Man Kalmar as his Christmas gift, probably because he had been so negative about the atmosphere in town during the competition, comparing it to religious ecstasy. The idea that Eric, who had never even run a marathon before, was now supposed to do just that after swimming 3.84 kilometers and cycling 180 kilometers was slightly terrifying, but he would show her. Eric planned to take the bike ferry over to Owen during the weekend combining his training with his search for the ideal place to build a cottage. He would never be able to convince Sapriya to live somewhere like that permanently, but he hoped that he would be able to sell her on the idea of a summer house. Then he realized just how unrealistic his plans were. He couldn't just run off like that without her parent. Well, oh my God. He couldn't just run off like that when her parents were visiting. The book he had ordered from Amazon had finally arrived yesterday. The knowledge, how to rebuild our world after an apocalypse. It wasn't that Eric thought that the world was going to go under, at least not during his or his own or even Nyla's lifetime, but the book contained all kinds of information about how to begin growing and preserving food, how to build waterways, how to generate electricity, and so on. He returned to his desk and opened the latest email. It was from Daniel forwarding a summary of Axel Sandston's call logs. As he wolfed down his first banana, he scanned through the list, searching for the time frame when he visited when they visited Axel's office. What have you heard? Eric turned around and found himself staring straight at Hannah's blank face. The woman really was hard to read. He held up the call logs to her. Axel called taught Jana right after we left him, he said, though he suspected that wasn't quite what she meant. No, about my dad. A couple of people were talking about him in the cafeteria yesterday. And what did they say? That he was a drunk who broke into a woman's house, beat her up, and then burned down the house with her in it. Hannah's face softened slightly. It had been the right decision not to lie. Listen, Eric continued. I don't care what your dad did. But I do. She turned around and strode out of the room before he had time to say anything else. That went well, Eric thought as he munched on the second banana. It was Hannah who had spoken to Top Johnny yesterday, but he suspected his colleague needed time to calm down, so he decided to call her himself. Are you at work? Eric asked after introducing himself as a police officer. Yes, said Top John at Eden. Then I'd like you to take your phone somewhere you can't be overheard. Axel Stanston was really the only person he didn't want to hear their conversation, but Eric was reluctant to mention his name. Hold on. He heard the click of heels against the parquet floor, followed by the sound of a door closing. Yesterday, you told my colleague that you were at work until 11 p.m. on Tuesday. Do you stick to that statement? Yes, Tatjana said qu quietly. Axel called you at 2.02 .02 yesterday afternoon. What did he want? I don't remember. Come on, I'm sure you do. It was right after we spoke to him, so I'm assuming that was what your conversation was about. Tot John was quiet. Eric thought he could hear her pulse down the line. I need you to tell the truth, he said. Axel will fire me. This is a murder investigation, and I think you know you can't withhold information from us. Tot John made a noise that sounded like it was a part sigh, part sob. Axel went out on lunch on Tuesday, she said, and he was so agitated when he got back that I asked what had happened. What did he say? That he'd run into his idiot son. What happened? He didn't say, but this is what he told you not to tell us. Yes. As soon as Eric hung up, he went over to see Ove, knocking and opening the door without waiting for an answer. He found his boss slumped in his desk chair, head tipped back, snoring. Another loud knock made him jolt awake, wiping his mouth with his arm, even though he hadn't been drooling. Christ, I'm tired, he apologized. We were babysitting at Penny last night, so I didn't get much sleep. Penny was Ove's only grandchild, and knowing what Ove was like, Eric guessed she had been allowed to eat what she wanted and stay up until she crashed on the sofa. How old is she now? Turned one in January. Eric recrapped what Chot Jana had said about Axel Stanson's meeting with his son. So what do we do now? He asked. Check whether Daniel has found anything on Stanson, said Ove. And then 
bring him in for questioning. Eric had already turned to leave when Ove continued, Take Hannah with you. Eric wanted to argue, but he couldn't do that without revealing what had just happened between him and his colleague, so he held his tongue. In order to give Hannah a little more time, he began by tracking down Daniel. As ever, he was sitting at his desk reading something on the screen. Being a detective was a sedentary job. You got anything on Axel Stanston? He asked. From the corner of one eye, Eric saw Hannah step into the room and walk toward her desk. All I found so far is a load of praise, said Daniel, and I'm guessing that's not what you want. That's not what you want him to talk about. Ideally not. Eric made his way over to Hannah, who was slumped in her chair, staring at her phone as though it had just given her a telling off. What's wrong? He asked. She glared up at him. I just called Tatjana. Imagine how stupid I felt when I realized you'd already spoken to her. Sorry, he said. I should have told you. He should have, of course, but Eric still thought she was overreacting. Misunderstandings happened, and he doubted Tatjana really cared. What did you want? Hannah snapped. We're bringing in Axel Sandston for questioning. Hannah reached for her black bomber jacket and got to her feet. Both it and her blue jeans looked like they came from the men's section. Her body language seemed different now. She was probably looking forward to the interview a little too much.